Negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or the TPP, have been conducted in total secrecy over the last three years. Now, in case you don't know, the TPP is an unprecedented series of negotiations, not led by world leaders, but by multinational corporations. The negotiations are in their final stages right now, but there's still very little public awareness about the entire issue of this massive trade bill. Unfortunately, there's also another problem on our hands. See, President Obama's counting on a fast track for the TPP that would rush it through without lawmakers having a chance to review the content. So here to talk about the latest and the dangers it poses, I'm joined by Margaret Flowers, organizer for popularresistance.org. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you for having me, Abby. So the TPP is labeled as a free trade agreement, but I've right. heard from many people who actually have analyzed what we do know about the text and have said that it's simply not true. If it's not a trade deal, what is it? Well, it's a rigged corporate agreement is what it really is. I mean, it has 29 chapters and only four or five of them are really are traditional trade issues. And the others have to do with dealing with uh, what they call non-tariff trade barriers. That means like labeling food so you know what's in it, uh, keeping the pro price of medications down. They're, they're protecting the patents for the drug companies. They can keep their prices high and, and deregulating finance, those kinds of things that corporations have wanted to get through Congress but they haven't been able to do it through the front door. And how many corporate advisors are we talking about? Well, that's an interesting thing. This is being negotiated in a really different way. Instead of Congress overseeing it and writing the negotiations, 600 corporate advisors from, you know, Monsanto, Halliburton, Cargill, all oh, the Oh, great. Companies. All the corporations I trust the exactly. most. Exactly. The, they have direct <laughs> access to the text, and they can alter it while our own members of Congress have very restricted access to it. And then they can't talk about it because it's classified if they do see it. You know, Margaret, I just, it begs the question, like, what, who's really running the show? You know, who's really <laughs> running this country here if Congress can't even look at it yet these massive corporations can I mean it's the biggest trade negotiation almost in history exactly how has it been able to stay out of the spotlight for so long I mean I'm not even on the media at all I know that's the amazing thing is I guess you know through the corporations control of the media as well as you know the corporate media they've really blacked it out they've kept it out this has been going on for almost four years and it's really just breaking through recently into the media um, you know, is there any way for the average person to see the text, or do we have to rely on some sort of whistleblower to release it from the inside? It would be great if a whistleblower would stand up and do this, because this is really undermining democracy in this country, and it's going to hurt all of us, because it's going to affect our laws, even down to the local level. We'll have to comply with this agreement, which is begin being negotiated in secret, and the president is trying to rush it through Congress. So we know what we know from leaked text and from trade meetings and reports like that, but everything we've seen so far is very concerning. You know, I guess... My next question is, uh, if Obama, you know, if it is so unknown, it seems like there's still a vast majority of Americans who do not even know about the TPP. Mm -hmm. If you were to ask them on the street, they would have no idea what you're talking about. Right. I guess I'm just confused of why is it that Obama's trying to fast track it if it seems like it's not really <laughs> going to be a problem for him to pass it? Well, if it actually had the light of day shined on it, if we actually had hearings in Congress and looked at the impact it would have on our, you know, our economy, on wages, on food safety and health care, those kinds of things, it wouldn't be able to be passed. So the only way he can get this through and please the corporations that are writing it is if he rushes it through Congress. And fast track means that there would be no amendments and very restricted debate on it. So is this almost so. just a preemptive measure before it even gets to that point? Right. Well, the interesting thing is that, it, and this is what the previous trade negotiator said, was in order to get it passed, they needed fast track because other countries are putting in provisions that are going to harm them and that are not popular with their countries. And so they don't want to go any farther unless they know that, that Congress is going to pass it. And the only way they'll pass it really is through fast track. Very undemocratic process. Untransparent, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. How right. would this bill affect the average American? Why should the average American care about the TPP? Because it's so far reaching, it's going to affect something that every person cares about. So if you care about the safety of your food or whether it's labeled to know if GMOs are in it, those things would be restricted. If you have medications that you need to buy and you care about the price of that, those prices will be kept high if you care about internet freedom. The thing is, and even by, actually a big thing is buy America. If you like to buy American products or buy local, that would be limited. So it, it really will c require that our laws get changed even down to the local level and how we do things and in a way that we have no control over. So it, it, it really undermines our sovereignty. And when people um, hear that it's you know being uh, an effort led by corporations and that corporations are kind of writing and managing this whole process, can you speak really, really briefly about the court system that will be instated? That's, thank you for bringing that up. It's called the International Trade Tribunal. And this is a court that operates outside of our judicial system where corporations can sue countries if their laws interfere with expected profits. So if you, if they wanted to frack in an area and a, and a community bans fracking, that community could be sued for that. 
that for millions of dollars. So it, it really, here and around the world, what it's going to do is undermine our laws that protect the environment, consumers, and workers. Absolutely. The local <laughs> municipal efforts that are happening to, you know, label GMOs, ban fracking, stuff like that. Protect um, water from being privatized, exactly. How, you know, without this much-needed corporate exposure mm -hmm. from the corporate media, rather, um, how can we prevent this from moving forward? Well, the nice thing is, is that it's already been slowed, I think, because of some public pressure. Um, the president had wanted to have fast track by now, and they haven't even introduced the bill. More and more people are learning about this and working together and contacting their members of Congress, letting them know that this is not, not okay to fast track it through. So we can stop fast track if we get involved. So everyone has to contact Congress, tell them no on fast track, and more importantly, no on the TPP in general. What exactly. can people do to just stop the entire bill from moving forward before right. we can really get some public so they, Our campaign is called flushthetpp.org. People can take the pledge there, and they'll get information and tools to take action. The primary thing at first is to stop Congress from passing fast track. And then if they if they don't pass fast track and this comes to Congress, we have to demand full hearings. We need to know the full implications of this bill on us. I think otherwise it's, you know, that's, that's what problem. democracy is about. Yeah. Thank you so much, Margaret Flowers, co-director of Is Our Economy. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you for having me.